Hey folks, I'm Dennis. Thanks for watching my video. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple bluebird nesting box. Bluebirds, flycatchers, and swallows are attracted to this type of box, so depending on where you live, you could use it to attract any of those types of birds. The thing that I like about this design is it's a simple plan. It uses one six-foot board and a minimal amount of tools are required. It's a great project to use if you want to build something, for example, with your child or your grandchild. It's also a great project to just get started in woodworking and to make something that you can put outside and attract some birds to your yard or your garden and enjoy them being around. You will need a minimal amount of tools. You're going to need some type of a saw, either a hand saw or a power saw that you can cross cut with. You're going to need a drill, a square and a pencil and a tape measure. If you're using nails, you'll need a hammer. You're going to need a drill bit that you can drill an inch and a half diameter hole with. You could actually drill a smaller hole if you have a coping saw and you could cope the hole out with a coping saw. That'd be fine also. You're going to need a smaller bit like a 3 16 to drill the mounting holes in the in the top and the bottom of the back. And if you're using, you can use nails or screws. If you're using screws, you're going to need a smaller bit also like a 1 16th or a 3 seconds bit just to drill the pile holes with. Here's the plan I'm using. I like this plan for a simple project, particularly if you're teaching somebody else or you're building something for the first time because it doesn't require a lot of wood and it doesn't require a lot of additional calculations or work. So you can use a, a one by six board, six feet long. You could build this using a, a one by six pine board. You could build it using a um, cedar fence board, which are usually uh, also one by six. They might be a touch thicker. Sometimes they're seven eighths instead of three quarters thick. And you've only got a few cuts to make, uh, a couple of holes to drill. It's got access on one side to clean it out because bluebirds prefer that you clean out their nests every year. Again, I'm taking a one by six pine board. I'm gonna cut the back out at 15 inches, the roof out at seven and a half inches, the front at nine inches, and both the sides at eight and a quarter, the floor at four, and then there's a guard that you cut at three. That's to place over the hole they actually don't have that drawn right, but so I'm going to make my cuts, drill my holes, and then we'll start assembling it. Now, when you're dealing with any kind of lumber, you want to make sure that you start with a square end. So take your square, put it near the uh, end of the board, scribe a line on it, and then take your first cut right there. I like to cut the largest pieces first. So that way if I mess up, I can cut it back to the next piece. Longest piece is the back, which is 15 inches. So take that and measure back 15 inches. Make a line on your 15 inch mark. Take your square. Scribe a line and then make a cut. I would measure and cut and then measure and cut because your saw is going to take out a certain amount of material once you cut it. So you don't want to just take a board and measure 15 and then seven and a half and then nine because you'll lose length on every cut that you make. So measure, take a cut, then come back and measure for your next piece and take a cut. So I've got all my pieces cut. When you're done cutting, you end up with, with one piece at 15, a piece at nine, two pieces at eight and a quarter, one at seven and a half, one at four, and one at three. And then you end up with about 17 inches or so left over if you bought a uh, six foot board. That's what I started with. So the nice thing about that is, is if you mismeasure a cut or you mess up on a cut, you got a little bit of material left to fix it and not have to go buy another board. Now, if you wanna label these pieces, um, it'd be perfectly fine you know, to take a pencil and write, you know, guard and bottom and sides on each one to keep it straight if you want. I just stack mine up by length so I can keep up with it based on the plan uh, what each length is. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to take the guard, the predator guard, and we need to take the uh, front and drill our inch and a half hole. So I'm gonna use a hole saw because that's what I've got. I don't have anything else that's an inch and a half. Hole saws are a little funny. You have to kind of take your time, particularly in soft wood. When you first engage the bit, 
so that it doesn't dig in and, and bind your, your uh, drill up but I'll show you how to do that. You probably want a piece of scrap wood to put under what you're drilling. To drill the small piece, the predator guard, you probably want to have a couple of clamps. Uh, you could hold it and you're just gonna have to be careful that it doesn't spin it out of your hand. So the first thing that we need to do to drill the holes is to locate them. So the bottom of the hole is supposed to be six inches up from the bottom of the front. So since this is an inch and a half hole, it's three quarter radius so we want the center of the hole to be at six and three quarters from the bottom of the of the front piece so we want to make that the front side that looks like the dude on uh, the thing off of um, ice age <laughs> so i'm going to measure up from the bottom six and three quarter uh, yeah six and three quarters at about the center, make a line. One by sixes are five and a half inches wide. So half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So I'm gonna put the center there. That's gonna be the center of our hole where I've got that little, I just put a little mark there to give me the center. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this predator guard. It's We cut it at three inches. So I'm gonna make a mark at an inch and a half. And then I'm gonna make another mark at two and three quarters across it. So that's gonna give me the center for that hole. And then I can drill these holes. I just got a piece of scrap wood from an old project. And I'm gonna put it underneath of this so that I don't drill into my work table. You're gonna put the center of your bit you know, on your mark. And then with a hole saw, it's gonna drill the pilot hole first. And then when you get down to where the hole saw itself is going to engage in the wood, you want to not put a whole lot of pressure on there because these are usually real coarse teeth and it'll bite, snatch the thing out of your hand, tear your wood up and all that. So you want to put just gentle pressure on it to get it started. Let's see how I'll let it just score at first. And then I can begin to put a little bit more pressure on it as long as I can hold it and uh, it'll be fine. And then we'll do the front. Now if you get the plug stuck in your hole saw, almost all of the, these hole saws are made with a nut back here. So you can change the bit itself. So I've already loosened this one up, but what you can do is you take your wrench and, and break that loose if you can't get that plug out. And then the, the bit will come off of the mandrel and then you can back that plug out off the bit, off the pilot bit, put it back together and then uh, go about your business. These nuts on these things that it'll have, it'll look regular on one side and then it'll be open on the other side. Make sure the open end goes toward the hole saw bit so it can tighten down on the mandrel. And then be sure to tighten that back up with your wrench before you, uh, before you use it again. But that's how you can clear the plug. So if you have a little bit of sandpaper, you know, just take it and, uh, and go around the, that hole just to sort of smooth it out a little bit, get the splinters off. So we've got, both the holes drilled. The next thing we need to do is take the bottom. You want to have drain holes in the bottom. You can either just cut the corners off to allow a little bit of room for any water that gets in there to drain, or you can just drill some holes near the corners. I'm just gonna cut the corners off at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna cut about a half inch or so down each side off, and that'll give plenty of uh, drain space. So when you get done with the bottom, if you're gonna do it by cutting the corners off, it'll just look like that when you're finished. And that'll give them plenty of drainage. Next, I'm going to drill four holes into the Predator guard and line up the two holes that I made and attach it to the uh, front panel. Now, if you're using nails, since this is three quarter inch thick material, that's an inch and a half total thickness. So if you are using nails, 
you only want to use inch and a quarter nail which would be like a three penny nail if you're using a nail for something like this is take your nail particularly if you're nailing you know near the end of a piece of wood you don't want the nail to split the grain which it'll do so take your nail turn it upside down with the head down stick it on something that you know is a scrap or something hard and just give it a couple of taps with your hammer to blunt the tip and by blunting that tip it'll uh, prevent splitting the wood when you drive a nail close to the edge like that i'm going to use screws on mine but again you could you can put this together with nails i'm going to use a little number eight countersink inch and a quarter bit uh inch and a quarter screw Now this is the back piece, this is the 15 inch piece. I want the bottom of the box to be about two inches up from the bottom of the back piece. That gives me enough meat down at the bottom to run a, an attachment screw if I'm gonna screw it to a tree or to a post. And that leaves me about four inches up top to do the same. So I'm gonna measure down from the bottom two inches or up from the bottom rather two inches and just for for reference sake I'm gonna take my my square and I'm gonna mark a line that way I know everything on the bottom will line up on that line so then I'll take my two side pieces which are the two that are at an, uh, eight and a quarter and the bottom which is the one that I've cut the corners off. It was cut at five and a half inches wide, four inches, but we're gonna turn it sideways. So the five and a half then becomes the depth of the box. That allows us room for the two sides to get mounted like so. You can see how all that lines up. And I'm just gonna align these on the bottom. I'm probably gonna put the floor just a little bit up from the bottom maybe a quarter of an inch from the bottom of these side pieces i'm going to put two screws in one side but i'm only going to put one screw in the other side um, because that'll be the one that you take out to flip up the side i'll show you how that works when we get it together so for the rest of it i'm just going to use um inch and a quarter deck screws And again, if you're using nails, you know, you just nail it together as you go, it'd be fun. Next, I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna put the face on. So when you put the front on, you just line up the, the bottom edges here so that they're flush. And then I'm gonna run a couple screws here and here and here and here, and that'll hold all that together probably put one into the floor also right here just for added stability and it's a birdhouse not a piece of furniture so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect particularly if you're building this you know like with uh, you know if you're building it with your with your child or your grandchild or something especially if they're young they lose patience quick so <laughs> you it needs to kind of go together pretty pretty well and pretty quick Throw some screws in it. Don't over tighten them, especially if you're using pine or cedar because it's soft. And really all you need is to get them snug because it's not gonna be under a lot of stress. So that's, that's the box. You wanna check and make sure on the inside, you know, that there's no screws sticking out you don't wanna hurt the birds. And now all we have to do is mount it to the back and then we can put the roof on. So I'm just going to use my line that I scribed to line it up, you know, where I want it. So I'm going to put that like so. And again, if you, if you don't have clamps, that's fine, just set it down on its face. 
get you a couple of nails started in the back you know line it up and hold it in place and then set you two nails once you set two nails it can't move and then you can drive your other nails it'll be fine now this is the side panel over here that's got the two screws on the bottom this one only has one screw in the bottom so on this side we only want to screw on the top of the front and the back so that that door can so that that can become a door and swing out when we go to clean it out yeah now on this side what i'll have to do is take this screw out and this screw out and then i can swing this open off of this screw and then i'll, I'll match a screw in the back so that it can swing open so i'm going to measure from the from the bottom so from the bottom i set this screw at four and three quarters so i want the screw in the back to be set at the same place at four and three quarters basically i'm just making sure that this front screw and this back screw are at the same height so that the this side can swing open and you can do the same thing with, with nails when it comes time the end of the season to clean it out i can take this screw out which i can get to from the front and i can take this screw out which i can get to from the side even though you know once it's mounted with those two screws out then i can open this side and reach up in here and get my bird nest out close it back put those two screws in you could really probably do it with just one i probably could have omitted this screw but and now we just want to mount the top and the top is going to mount like so so that we have a have ventilation holes on the top of each sidewall and then do the same thing from the back and the only other thing that i'm going to do with mine is i'm going to take a larger bit like a uh, 3 16th bit and i'm going to drill a hole center on the uh the bottom of the back and center on up here on the top of the back so that i can mount it that way i can run a couple of screws in longer screws or nails into a tree or a uh, fence post or something to hold so thanks for watching folks i hope you enjoyed the video on how to build a simple little bluebird house hopefully it's helpful to you um, and uh, get you started on building something out of wood maybe showing some uh, younger folks how to build some things and uh, maybe even attract some birds to your backyard so thanks for watching i hope to see you back soon please give me a like below if you would subscribe to my channel check out some of my other videos and i hope to see you back soon thank you and god bless you